Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to be making a wooden name puzzle. It's been a few weeks since I posted my last video. That is because I wanted to drop basically everything I was doing and finish the website that I had started. It was a long process, but it's done. And if you wanna check that out, there is a link right on my banner. Let's get to it. To begin, I ripped a quarter inch piece of birch and a half inch piece of birch on my table saw to four inches. I wanted the height on this puzzle to be three and a half inches, so I thought going with four inches would give me plenty of space to cut this on my scroll saw. After I ripped these to four inches, I taped my quarter inch piece and my half inch piece on top of each other. The quarter inch piece is going to be the bottom of our puzzle, so you want to make sure that is on the bottom of the stack and that the half inch piece is on top and your pattern gets glued to that. For my letters, I am using a rough sawn piece of walnut. It is almost one inch thick. This is the first time that I will be cutting walnut on my scroll saw. And the reason why I have not cut walnut before is because, well, walnut's expensive and I'm cheap. But my cute little niece needed a name puzzle as a gift for her first Easter. So it was worth spending the money on a piece of walnut. And today I will be making two of these name puzzles. At this point, you want to make sure that the only pilot hole that you're drilling is on the outside of the shape of your puzzle because first we are going to cut this. We are going to first begin by cutting out the shape of our puzzle. This Adeline was a bit of a struggle to cut out on my scroll saw because the ink was so light. I was losing track of my line pretty easily. I would definitely recommend using a darker color. The reason why this is such a light color and why the colors are so wonky is because I ran out of ink in my printer. Even though I pay for a monthly subscription of ink so I do not run out, I ran out. So, that is why it got printed so light. But it was a struggle. Now that the shape of my puzzle is all cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and set these bottom pieces aside because now we're not gonna need those until the end. These here, I'm gonna take over to my drill press and we are gonna start drilling the holes on the inside of these letters. So now I'm going to cut out all my letters and we're gonna cut on the outside of the line for this part. And I wanna make sure that when I'm cutting my O and my A that I'm going to cut out those pieces first before I cut out the whole letter so that way later I can go ahead and glue those onto the bottom piece for the letters to fit nice and tight. All the letters that we cut out are trash and we just want to keep the insides because we're going to glue these on after we get our letters cut out. So I'm going to peel the patterns off and get this sanded. I want to get this project done today. Um, so I want to get this gluing so that way in another hour or so I can get the edge banding put on. Now that all my sanding's done, I'm gonna go ahead and glue the bottom piece of my puzzle on. I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue and a dab of super glue to get it to set up a little quicker. And I've got it in some spring clamps. So now I'm gonna cut my letters and then this will be ready to edge band when I'm all done that. So now I'm ready to cut my letters on the scroll saw. When we cut them out on the birch, we cut on the outside of the line. So now I'm going to cut on the inside of the line, but I'm not going to follow it on the left side. I'm going to follow my line on the right side. So I'll be cutting 
on the printed line so my blade curve comes out on that side. So that way my letters don't become too small and wiggly within the puzzle. If you would like to see how I designed this puzzle using Inkscape, I will leave a link in the description. Once I finished cutting my letters, I applied edge banding to the edge of my puzzle. I already have it cut to the approximate size. For this, you are going to need three quarter inch um, edge banding. That ended up being a little bit of a harder task than I bargained for um, on the rounded corners, but we got it done. I got it sanded. All my letters I sanded with my little gator with a 120 grit sandpaper and now everything is ready to be oiled. Now it's time to oil and finish this project up. I stood in the Home Depot for 10 minutes trying to decide between tongue oil and Danish oil and tongue oil was what I decided on. I even asked a random stranger what oil he would choose. So let me know down in the comments which oil you would choose, Danish or tongue, because I had no idea. There are also two things that I learned from this project. One, the hardest part was the edge banding. I found that to be such a headache. So next time, I'm going with a solid maple bottom. Thing number two that I learned from this project. When I was designing an Inkscape, there was no need to thicken my lines. I think that the letters are a little bit loose. I was slightly concerned about small children being able to fit the pieces in if they were too tight, so that's why I thickened the lines. So next time, I would just forget thickening the lines or maybe just go slightly less. If you found value in this video, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up. You can follow me on Facebook or Instagram at Stronger by Grace Designs. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you next time. Mm -hmm.